Right, you're going to have to make do with that whole background sound because I cannot seem to get rid of it. It only comes when I'm using the screen recording software. If I try in Audacity, records fine. If I try anything else, records fine. As soon as I'm running Kazam screen recording, this sound just gets horrible with that really weird background buzz. Right, this is a remake of the video that I pulled a couple of weeks ago. I would like to show off the software side of my pirate box. You've seen the hardware side, mostly me fighting with power supplies. But uh, I have the software, and this is where my pirate box stands out from all the others. Because my design is based largely around IPFS, which has a couple of advantages. Right, I am now connecting to the pirate box SSID. Usually Firefox pops up a little window. There we go, a little notification. It has picked that up as a network login page. If the browser doesn't, as soon as you try to go to any HTTP site, you just get redirected here anyway. It's the standard captive portal logon arrangement. It's well tested, very reliable. The Pirate Box homepage, as can be seen here, is built on IPFS which just means there's no need to worry about a separate folder on the uh, box. It makes management a little bit easier. As a pirate box, it provides the standard features you would expect of such a device. You have a message board, which has odd stuff in it because I've taken it to strange meetings. You have a file uploader, which will... Um, upload files, not much to say on that one. You upload a file, it will hand you back a link that you can post in a message board. It will also add the uploaded file onto this list of uploaded files, which is just full of strange stuff that people have put on there. There, that would be a friend of mine uploaded that. I took it to Norway and uh, someone played with it. That's also why the main page has been translated into Norwegian. There's a device status page. Why are there two? Oh yeah, of course my mobile phone is connected to it. Um, not my phone, my laptop. Right, just your standard diagnostic monitoring things, list of stations connected. If this was the full sized one, it would also show the battery time but this is the mini one and to reduce size and cost it does not include battery level monitoring capability and there's some instructions now unlike the standard pipe box image this thing does not have to deal with droopy that rather not very nice piece of software for uploading files IPFS handles that IPFS also handles the deletion of old content should the box become full up. It also handles a mesh configura configuration to some extent. I've only got two of these and I've got no one to work on it with so I've really got no way to develop the mesh any further. The rudiments of it are in there if you set up multiple pirate boxes with uh, two wireless interfaces, one for the AP, one for the mesh. They can find each other, they will configure their mesh networks, they will connect their IPFS nodes together, but you can't do much with it because it does not connect their message boards. So even if you upload something to one pirate box, the others aren't aware it's there, so they can't send a request for it. But it's the outline of mesh networking, but it's incomplete. Right, there's not really much more to show about this, but I'll be quite happy to share the documentation, such as it is, and the image. All you need to do to build one of these things is copy that image onto a micro SD card, stick it in a Pi, that's it. The configuration scripts that run on startup will detect the change of MAC address and run the configuration to create a new Pirate Box automatically. 
it takes a couple of minutes to start up and it's good to go right so I think that was everything um, yep yeah, that was all so I'm quite proud of that device <laughs>